In January 1934, a grisly discovery was made in a bungalow in Hordle. Mrs Annie Nora White, a schoolmistress in Hordle, was found by her neighbour unconscious with burn-like bruises over her body. Annie died the next day. About a week later, Annie's husband Reginald White was found decapitated on the railway line near Sway. He apparently had taken his own life. It was suspected that he may have murdered his wife. On that fateful day, Annie Nora White's husband went to work leaving her in bed. In the afternoon, a neighbour went to her house and found her in bed unconscious in her nightclothes. A doctor was summoned and found marks on the body which she thought were burns and bruises. After her death, the police were called in and the body was taken away for post-mortem. Certain organs were sent to Southampton for analysis. Sir Bernard Spilsbury examined the body and came to the conclusion that the burns were really blisters, possibly caused by ingesting some drug. When interviewed, the husband stated that Annie had been suffering with neurothenia and had been confined to bed for a few days. He said that when he left for work at 7am, Annie was in bed asleep. The police made extensive inquiries and were suspicious that Annie may have taken some narcotic poison. Registers of chemist shops over a wide area were inspected by the police, but no unusual purchases of poison could be traced. Superintendent Jacobs, who was in charge of the investigation, felt that a vital link in the chain of evidence was missing. He decided that no further steps could be taken till the result of the chemical analysis of the organs of the body was known. Mr White attended the funeral of his wife and he sent a wreath strangely inscribed in sorrow Reg. After his wife's death Reg White made a long statement to the police saying my wife's death is a complete mystery to me. We lived happily together and my wife had been very cheerful over Christmas. Later she became rather ill again and had been in bed for three days before she died. When I left her she was asleep and I know there were no marks left on her body. Later he stated, I know what the gossips are saying about me. I know just how stories fly around the country villages. I have made up my mind that the maligners should be proved wrong. They will live to regret the things that they have said about me. Anyone who says that we quarrelled violently on Saturday night or any other night is telling lies. On that night, I was concerned in comforting her in an effort to soothe her pain. In the inquest, it stated that Mrs White was about 11 years older than her husband and had undergone an operation to remove a tumour from her breast some years before. The coroner said that the police were not satisfied that this was not a natural death. The coroner adjourned the inquest for three months to give the police more time to complete their inquiries. Soon after the inquest finished, Mr White's body was found by a railway plate layer who was inspecting the line soon after daybreak. His head had been severed from his body. Reg White's father stated that local gossips had driven his son to take his life by spreading slanderous statements about him. The father said that he had never heard them quarrel as far as he knew they were happy together. Following the discovery of White's body, the police searched the White's bungalow in Hordle for two hours looking for evidence. The question remains, did Annie White kill herself? Did Reg White murder his wife and commit suicide? Or did the couple have enemies with murderous intentions? The case remains unsolved.